enough for us in all of our needs. Amen? Amen. 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 Let us be seated together as we continue in our order of worship. We will be led in communal prayer by our deacon Kiwon O. Oh. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for calling us today to your house to worship and praise you. This and please purify our hearts so that our worship is only focusing on you, Lord. Lord, thank you through the 42nd anniversary worship service. You made us thank again for your abundant grace over the past 42 years and awakened our souls with your messages. Watch over our church, our away ministries, and all our members of this community to continue to carry out your mission from generation to generation. Though we are also having VBS for our next generation. May it be continued with your grace and bless all the hands and works that were dedicated to this feast of grace. And let our children have the fear of God, the beginning of knowledge in their hearts. Lord, thank you for your precious words prepared for us today. When the word of the Lord is delivered through our Pastor Joseph Kim, grant us a good soil of heart so that we can receive your words and bear fruits 30, 60, and 100 times. Lord, we have decided to follow Jesus. May our faith become stronger through this worship service and let it be a living sacrifice that you are pleased to receive. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. And now we will hear from the scripture. Uh, reading to us today will be Deacon Youngmin Lee and Deacon Sarah Lee, and they will be reading from the first letter to Timothy, chapter 6, verses 7 through 10 and 17 through 19. Hear now the word of the Lord. For we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people, eager for money, have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. In, in this, this way, way they, they will lay up treasure for, for themselves as a, as a firm foundation for the coming age, so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. Amen. 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 Truly, thanks be to the Lord for the scripture. And now some brief announcements. Welcome everyone to Awake Ministries, our English service here. If this is your first time joining us today, we welcome you with warm and open hearts. Please uh, stand up at the end and then come forward at uh, the end of the service so that we can greet you and give you a small gift, a token of our appreciation for you joining us today. Also, if anyone would like to volunteer for our prayer or scripture reading, uh, please speak to one of our secretaries uh, to join in this blessed work. Let us also continue in prayer for our church and for our nation, especially for our leadership uh, during this pandemic time, which uh, seems just will not end, uh, will not go away. So now more than ever, we need to pray and be vigilant in that. Also, um, one of our members, uh, Kim Jae-kyung Kwon Sanim, <coughs> sorry, Kwon Sanim, uh, is having a special art display through our art ministry, Para. Um, so this will be at Insa Art Center on the second floor from July 20th through the 25th. Uh, so I encourage uh, many of you to go and attend and share in this good work. Also, please keep our church's VBS and Holy Mountain Retreat plans in your prayers. Uh, Hosanna, Shalom, and Jesus Generation are having their activities this week, especially Jesus Generation has gone all the way to Wonju Retreat Center to be the vanguard, the first to go to Wonju. 
um, in preparation for our church-wide retreat, but please pray for their safe return and for the safe activities of all of our departments. And Paideon as well, our youngest children will be having their activities starting this coming Saturday and Sunday, so please keep them in your prayers as well. And now we will hear from our blessed Shoshana Choir with the choral selection, Blessed Assurance. to our wonderful Shoshana Choir for that uh, very beautiful um, choral praise, to our Tehila worship team, of course, for the beautiful job they also do. To our AV team, there were a lot of technical challenges today, uh, but by the grace of God and their um, expertise, we were able to uh, get it under control just in time at 1.30. Uh, to our welcome desk standing outside uh, every Sunday, greeting all of our members with such beautiful faces. Um, and also to uh, 
uh, Kiwano, Deacon Kiwano, for leading us in prayer. After leading us in worship, he just turned right around <laughs> to pray for us. Amen. And also for Young Min Lee and Sarah Lee for uh, scripture reading today. Today's the first time that we had not two, but three scripture readers. Um, she's expecting a bundle of joy very soon, so everyone please keep her in your prayers as well. We read today from the book of 1 Timothy, or as I would think it should be called, the first letter to Timothy. The Apostle Paul, who is a master teacher, missionary, church planter, was passing on his wisdom to his protege, his student, Timothy. And in the conclusion to this first letter, Paul has some final instructions for Timothy. And we have to think about how much thought Paul must have put into these words. Now, as modern readers of the Bible reading in 2022, we know that there is a first and a second Timothy. But back then, when Paul was writing this, he did not know there would be a second Timothy. It was not guaranteed. He had already been thrown into the prison for the gospel before. Who knows when the next time, perhaps the final time, he would be thrown into prison would be. And so Paul was writing like a man running out of time. How carefully he must have chosen his words, the topics and themes of his letter to Timothy. As I was thinking about this, preparing this sermon, it brought to mind Abraham Lincoln giving his final speech. Of course, he did not know it would be his final speech, but nonetheless, it became his final address to the nation. He gave it just outside the White House to a huge crowd that had gathered there. There were many happy faces. They were overjoyed, jubilant, and they expected the president to give a joyful victory message, a message of domination. See, the South had surrendered just two days earlier. But for Lincoln, he had a heavy heart because he knew that even though the civil war between the North and South was over, the difficult work of rebuilding the nation was just beginning. And so Lincoln surprised this joyful crowd with a very somber and serious tone. In a way, just like Paul laying out his final instructions to his young disciple, Lincoln gave his final instructions to a young nation. He proposed reconciliation, forgiveness, reintegration with the southern states, even though they had rebelled and lost the war. He wanted to give them grace. He wanted to give full citizenship and, more importantly, the right to vote for African Americans. And we have to consider how really unbelievably forward-thinking this was. It took another 100 years not 10, not 50, 100 years before this would actually be fully realized. He wanted to give African Americans the right to vote. These proposals made one of the young men in the crowd so angry, so livid, that he committed to kill the president. And three days later, he shot and murdered President Lincoln. But before he went, President Lincoln showed his heart and his vision for the nation. We have to wonder, do any of us know what our final words will be? Our final words to our parents, our final words to our children, our final words to our spouses. The words that you said to your loved ones today or last week, whenever the last time you spoke to them was, that might be the final thing you ever say to them. Who knows what tomorrow will bring? What, then, is the impression that you want to leave? What is the memory and the legacy that you want to leave with them? For Paul, he was very clear on what he wanted to say to Timothy, the message that he wanted to leave with his young disciple. He says, Timothy, we brought nothing into this world, nothing into this world, and we can take nothing out of it. We came into this world naked, with nothing to hide, nothing to show, with nothing in our hands, empty hands. Well, actually, babies come into the world with one thing in their hand, their thumbs, right? That is all that we have, nothing. 
empty-handed we came into this world, and empty-handed is how we will leave it. This is exactly how we will leave the world. So then, what is the most important priority for us, Timothy? What is it that we need to impart to our fellow believers to tell them is the most important thing? To fill our hands with material things, to grab more and more and more and fill our pockets with things that we will never be able to take with us? You know, the greatest Egyptian pharaohs, Ramses, Tutankhamun, they were buried in tombs filled with lavish amounts of gold and jewelry, precious stones, carvings, drawings. But not even one coin could they actually take with them. Paul tells Timothy that he and his followers must follow a different way of life, a different way of thinking, that they should not follow the wisdom of the world, seeking out riches and wealth and power above all else. No, Christians have a higher calling. We are called to more than that. And so Paul says, if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. How many of us have forgotten this? If we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation. They fall into a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. And some people so eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. This is especially important when we consider that Timothy was ministering in the influential port city of Ephesus, where there were many wealthy residents, many wealthy people who were also members of that church there. And you know, I think it's important to note here that Paul does not say it is bad to be wealthy. Paul does not say if you are rich, you are evil. That's not what he is saying. We see throughout the Bible and throughout history, there are many wealthy men and women of God. The missionary Underwood, who is so famous in Korea, would it have been possible for him to come here if his brother was not the owner of Underwood typewriters based in New York City? It says that during the history of this company, they sold 5 million typewriters. At one point, they were selling one typewriter every single minute. Think about how much money the other Underwood had. Right? He was like the Bill Gates of his time, selling computers. If it was not for that other Underwood, the Underwood that came to this country and brought Christ, the gospel, into the hearts of people here would never have been possible. And so we see so many other examples of this, of people who have wealth, who have riches, still working for the glory of God. Paul is not saying that these people are inherently evil. What he is speaking against is the desire to chase after wealth, to make it a priority above all things, to be hungry and desire for these things, to let it control our actions, our thoughts, our lives. This is what Paul is referring to as a temptation, a trap, what will lead to our destruction and ruin, a root of many kinds of evils. And so as followers of Christ, it's important for us to know that it is not a bad thing to have money. Indeed, much of God's good works require money to operate. But the difference is whether we control the money or we let the money control us. That is the difference. That is why Jesus warned us, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Not at the same time. So we see here, we're not called to abandon money because money is inherently evil. No, it is calling us to be masters over money. Not to let the man, money master over us. 
when we are masters over the money, and then beyond that, have God as master over our lives, it creates a clear hierarchy where we are good stewards of what we have been given. But what happens when money is a master over us? Now it blocks the way in between us and God. It stands in between us and God. We are masters over money, and God is master over us. There is a clear hierarchy that Paul is talking about. So how is it that we can live as this person, this ideal person who does not chase after wealth, who is not controlled by a desire for riches? Paul lays it out very clearly. Command those who are rich in the present world not to be arrogant. That's the first thing. Do not be arrogant. Do not put your hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but put your hope in God who richly provides us with everything. Everything and anything in our hands has come from his hands. And he has provided these things for our enjoyment, Paul says. Command them to do good, to be rich, not in wealth, but in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. And so again, Paul is not saying those who are rich is evil. Rather, he says, this is how those who are rich should live their lives in a way that honors God, in a way that builds up other people around them, that cares for them, their neighbors. Do not allow money to determine your identity. No. Just because you have more does not mean you are worth more. We are all fearfully and wonderfully made in God's image. And so Paul says, do not trust in your bank account. Do not trust in the numbers on the screen that tell you how much you have, how much you are worth. Put your hope in God. He is the true provider. Good, do good works in this world. Be rich in helping others, in having compassion, a giving and caring heart. And in doing all this, even those who are rich can be faithful in honoring God. They can be faithful in serving their neighbors. And as a result of these things, what is it that they will earn, Paul says? There is a clear result here. What is the result? Their salvation? No. Very clearly not. It is not their salvation that they can earn because salvation cannot be earned. It is given to us freely as a gift of God by the grace through Jesus Christ. All we must do, all we can do, is accept Jesus as our Savior, to claim him as, as Lord over our lives. But there is a result of these actions that the ideal rich person can take. And that is that these are fruit. As we said last week, good fruit comes from good trees. Good trees come from good soil. They are planted in good ground. And so the actions listed by Paul are fruit of a good person, fruit of a life changed by Jesus Christ. And the result of these actions, the result of these fruits, the rewards of these fruits, Paul tells us clearly, in this way, they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. Take hold of the life that is truly life. This is the one thing that we can really grasp in our hands. So how is it that we take treasures and riches with us when we die? Not by storing up wealth in our bank accounts. Not by filling our graves with precious objects. But by giving freely from our resources. By being generous and caring. It could be money. It could be time, it could be effort, it could be care. There are so many riches given to us by God that we can share with this world, that we can freely give out to others. And by doing these things, we build up our treasures in heaven. Recently, I had a dream about my mother. And in this dream, we were sitting in the kitchen together and she was receiving a phone call and her eyes were 
so wide with excitement. She said, really? Really? And I heard her say, $400 million? So I was very interested. I said, what? What did they say? I couldn't hear what the other person on the end of the line was saying to her. And I waited and I waited. And finally, she hung up the phone and she confirmed with all of us, with our family. And she said, yes, I'm receiving $400 million. Not one million dollars. And you know, when I woke up, I was so excited. I, I almost picked up my phone to call her and say, Mom, there's going to be some good news. Something good is going to happen for us. You know, many people have told me after losing a loved one that it feels like they're still there. It feels like one day they might call you or you can pick up your phone and just call them. In that moment, I thought I could call her. But I know that what is more important than that is that my mother lived her life for Christ. As the son of a pastor, a PK, I saw how hard she worked for 40 years in the church that her father, that she and my father planted. And in many ways, she led the church just as much as he did. And I know now this phone call in the dream was a call from God. And God was telling her what her heavenly account balance would be. Just as Paul said, in this way, lay up treasure for yourselves. Lay up treasure as a firm foundation, not here, but for the coming age so that you may take hold of the life that is truly, truly life. So we have to ask, where are we laying up treasures for ourselves? Are we filling our pockets, filling our accounts, chasing after that next zero that we can add? Are we piling up nice things for ourselves until our closets are bursting with nice things? Some people think land is what will make you rich and successful, and so they chase after it relentlessly. Others will view children as the epitome of their treasure and let that occupy all of their attention and energy. But the Bible tells us today, put your hope in God. Put your hope in God who richly provides you with everything. Not just so that you can give it back, but it says also for your enjoyment. Think about that. For your enjoyment. I want to close by mentioning something. If you remember last year, uh, you might remember there was a lot of talk, a lot of buzz about the launching of the James Webb Telescope. I want to show you the picture. It was a very strange looking telescope, right? What kind of telescope looks like that? But the James Webb Telescope cost $10 billion. It was the largest, most advanced telescope ever launched into space by humankind. It was supposed to give us the best glimpse of space that we had ever seen before in our history. Well, this past week, you might have heard news about the first images taken by the James Webb Telescope being beamed back to Earth. You know, in space, when a sun dies, it explodes. It doesn't just shrivel up and die. It explodes outward in a huge cloud of gas and fire. And this is what is known as a nebula. And if you see in the next picture, the Southern Ring Nebula. Scientists say that stars save the best for last, that when they die, they create such a beautiful sight to behold. Even in death, there is great beauty. And so this Southern Ring Nebula, which the James Webb Telescope uh, was able to photograph this past week, is one such nebula. But this is not the image that it took. The next one, this is the image of that same nebula taken by the James Webb Telescope. And you know, I know it's hard to see on the small screen here, uh, after service, you can search for it on your phone. But truly, 
the level of beauty and detail that we can see in this new image, what we could not see before, even though it was always there, is remarkable. There is a time coming when our treasures will be exposed, when we will be able to see them in greater detail. We will be able to see the true beauty that had been there all along. And so those who have amassed treasures in this world, those who have stored up treasures for themselves, and those who have stored up treasures in the next life, each one will know what is what. Each one will be known for who they really are. As Paul says in another letter to the Corinthian church, no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. Salvation is assured. But if anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is, for what it truly is because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. What we could not see before will be shown clearly to us. The treasure that we lay up in heaven will be revealed for what it truly is. Our works that have gone unseen, the treasures that cannot be measured, will all come to light on that final day. That is why Jesus also warns us, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy, where thieves break in and steal. No, store up for yourselves treasure in heaven where moth and vermin do not destroy, where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So the question we must ask ourselves as we leave today is, where is my treasure? Where is my heart? Where is my heart truly located? Is it down here? Is it in this life? Or is it up there in the next life? This world, we brought nothing into it, and we will take nothing out of it. It is heaven where our hearts should be. And so on that final day, when everything is revealed, I hope that all of you will have work that can withstand the fire, that your work will be shown for its true quality. Let us be rich. Yes. Isn't that a good saying? Let us be rich. But let us be rich in good deeds. Let us be rich in caring for others. And in doing these things, we will honor our Father in heaven. Let us pray together, dear Lord. We thank you for the words of Paul who advised his young disciple, Timothy, to lead faithfully and fearlessly, to speak truth into the lives of the richest and most powerful in the world that they lived in. We pray, Lord Father God, that with all of the resources that we have been given, all of the blessing that has been poured out to us, that we would not just hoard them up for ourselves, that we would not just use them for our own pleasures, O oh Lord, but that we would use them faithfully as stewards in service of your kingdom. Yes, O oh Lord, let us truly be rich. Let us store up these treasures, O oh Lord, in heaven, and let our hearts be there also. We thank you and we pray all of this together in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
this offering, dear Lord, we thank you that we can come before your altar of sacrifice and truly surrender all. Dear Lord, not just our finances in these envelopes, but all of our time, our energy, our efforts, everything that we have, oh Lord, we want our entire bodies to be living sacrifices given up to you, O Lord. May this be holy and pleasing in your sight. May it honor you, O Lord. And may you bless us even further so that this work may continue. We thank you, Lord, and we pray all of this together in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 As we conclude our service, thank you again so much for joining us. Uh, we have several newcomers today, so please, um, if you could just rise in your seats briefly uh, so that we can welcome you if you're here for the first time today. Everyone give them a round of applause, please, our newcomers. Thank you, thank you again. You are most welcome. Now let us all stand together. Let us all stand together. And before we sing our final song, let us greet each other and say, be rich. Be rich. Be rich. If you came with your husband and wife, say it again. Be rich. Be rich in good deeds. Amen. Let us all sing together.
true treasure in heaven, and the love of the Almighty Father God who riches, richly rewards us in his providence, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit who empowers us to be truly rich in these good deeds, be with the members of our Awake Ministries and Myungsung Church now and forever. Amen. 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 